come to cooking with alkali. Um, do in the oven. That Next. has to happen every time because somebody paid for it. Today we're going to be making an old favorite of mine. Uh, I truly love this recipe. I make it more often than any other pastry recipe. This is not a pastry. Any other dessert recipe. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make traditional brownies. We're going to make two kinds of brownies today. Uh, very fudgy brownies and very cakey brownies. We'll show you how they come out at the end. Uh, we're going to start today with the fudgy brownies. Now the difference if you can't figure it out, the fudgy brownies are nice and dense and moist and really have a lot of that chocolate flavor. Cakey brownies are a little bit more like cake. They're a little bit lighter on the chocolate but they still have a wonderful flavor to them and hopefully we can get that uh, one of the things you're looking for is that paper crust on top if you do this just right the top and I don't know if I'm gonna do it just right the top of your brownies comes out with this I can see you shaking your head over there gentleman who's sitting in the background <laughs> you do it just right you get a nice crust on the top of these brownies that uh, almost crumbles so we're gonna start off with six ounces of bittersweet chocolate now uh, stay Stay. That one's off camera. This is what I buy. Okay. There you go. All right. Now, you could buy the big baking bricks. You could buy the big pieces of chocolate. All of that is fine. But we're going to double broil with these. So the whole thing I'm trying to do is save myself a step. I bag bags of that because not only does a bag of that already come pre-cut up for you, basically, it's just loose pieces of chocolate. But that's exactly enough chocolate to do one cakey brownie and one fudgy brownie. So we're starting off once again with the fudgy brownie that's six ounces of bittersweet chocolate and one stick of unsalted butter. Use unsalted butter for this one because you're going to be putting in a little bit of salt later. And don't forget that salt isn't actually just add salt, it actually brings out the chocolate flavor. You're going to want that little bit of chocolate. We're going to use a double boiler to melt this. Now, if you don't know what a double boiler is, it's simple. This is a pot of water that I've had steaming on this stove, just at a medium heat. And that's a glass bowl on top. Don't put paper plates on top of the double boiler. The fact that somebody asked me that is upsetting. <laughs> All we're doing with this, uh, there's two things you need to know. One, you want to keep it moving. And two, you do not, and I repeat, do not want to get any water into this bowl. Now you've got steam building underneath it. I'm knocking things all over the place. You have steam building underneath it. What you don't want to do is let any of that steam get in here. That is why I'm using a smooth-sided double boiler, a smooth-sided glass bowl. We're going to just do this until this all melts and combines. The butter and the chocolate. And by the way, once again, six ounces of bittersweet chocolate. That's 60 percent carrot. Uh, 60 percent and a single stick of unsalted butter. We're gonna let all of this combine and come right back to you once that's done. All I'm doing is keeping it moving and making sure none of the steam gets in there. Water will ruin this. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. All I've done here is melted down the butter and the chocolate. Now, as you can see, there is a few lumps left in there. I'm gonna keep stirring until that's gone because I want this hot. What we're gonna be using this for in a moment is to melt sugar. So I want this totally smooth. I want this ready to go. Notice, you can. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. The yeah. steam is just, what I'm watching for, that's where the steam is escaping. I'm watching for condensation to form on that side of the bowl. If it starts to form, I've got a towel ready to go to wipe that up. You don't want water added to this part. If you get water added to this part, your chocolate gets all granularly. It'll start condensing. Uh, and it ruins the entire thing. Right now, if I can keep it at this consistency, it's going to be a nice, smooth brownie. And that's what we're looking for. The interior of this brownie, when you cut into them, should look like a moist, almost like a pudding. Uh, if I can pull it off, it's like nice a pudding. <laughs> like a pudding. Okay, so now it's smooth. This is hot, this is smooth. I turn off my steam. some of that delicious chocolate off the spatula. All right, taking it off the, uh, the steam, one of the reasons I'm doing that is wipe down the bottom of the bowl because once again, water. So there. There you go. That's all wiped off. Now, I used a rubber spatula to get that going because you want that going. 
we're going to use a whisk to get all the sugar. Now this is a cup and a half of sugar, I think. Yes, <laughs> cup and a half of sugar. This is unfortunately the part of the recipe that takes the longest. We're not just mixing this in. If you were just mixing in the sugar, which is fine by the way, if you're in a rush, I've done it more than once. Dump it in there, stir it in, that's fine. But if you put it in a little bit at a time and you just pulled it off the double boiler, now bear in mind, you had to have just pulled it off the double boiler and you do have to continuously work. It will um, cool down in a very short time. So while it's hot, you wanna add in as much of the sugar as you can because sugar does melt. If you do it just right, instead of getting a granularly uh, feel when this is all done, these become the smoothest brownies. Like I said, once again, the middle of it, the, consist the consistency, it almost looks like a pudding. Uh, it is obviously a solid, but oh, if you do these just right. So all you're doing is adding a little bit of the sugar. To and all I'm waiting to do the next pour is to not see white. If you see white, if you see the streaks, um, it's just not working. <laughs> okay. Now... And yes, other people can stir faster than me. Here's the beauty about cooking. Like, I'm not a good cook. Uh, I can bake okay, but I'm not a very good cook. Uh, it doesn't matter if you can't stir as fast as anyone else can. It doesn't matter if you can't chop an onion as fast as everybody else can. You know what you can do? You can get fat. <laughs> Just make whatever the hell you want and get fat. This is a terrible message for the kids. Hey, kids, you can be fat, too. Well, you know what? They, they, they look up to these, these supermodels. It's like, oh, follow your dreams. Like, no, I'm going to follow my stomach. Hold on. You know how there's a czar of fitness? You can yes. be the czar of fat. I'm totally the czar of fat. I'm, I'm a real American. I don't know. Do they have that anymore? I know the Arnold used to be. Czar of fitness? Yeah, Arnold used to be one. Is Arnold is the czar of fitness? He was. I swear to God. He was like on the president's uh, seals and everything. <laughs> Did you ever... Well... Don't you remember those from grade school? Arnold, Arnold, do you drink a lot of milk in your diet? Milk is for babies, I drink beer. There you go. That's one of my favorite quotes from Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay, so now as you can see here, it's cooling down. Uh, I've lost enough of the heat that you can kind of see it being grainy. It's not that grainy, that's fine, but I'm going to use a little bit more power to finish this up. More oh, power. So, more power. Hold on, let me get the cord going the right direction. Okay. This is going to get loud. That's not terrible. Now, once again, if I would have done a continuous stream coming right off of the burner, I've done this before where it comes out with a perfectly smooth chocolate uh, the entire time I'm mixing. I waited a little bit, I probably didn't have it up exactly the right temperature, but looking down at this, it's still a nice smooth consistency. And one of the tricks I'm using once again is to make sure every time I put some sugar in there that it is incorporated before I add more. Going slow really makes a difference. Did you already mention the amount that you're using or no? Say again? Did you mention the amounts that you're using or no? Yes, I've mentioned the amounts. We're going to have them at the bottom of this, and this time we actually have to do that. Yes. <laughs> so, so far, six ounces of bittersweet chocolate, that's 60%. One stick of unsalted butter. One and a half cups of sugar. Oh. Now, it does seem like a lot of sugar, but don't forget, we're not using a very sweet chocolate. This is how we're making the brownie sweet, is the sugar. This is really the only sweet ingredient. Everything else is a, almost like a bitter taste. Um, the chocolate that we use, 60%, is basically, it's not, I mean, it is a, it's not a dark, it's a bitter sweet, but it's not an overly sweet chocolate. All right, so this came out a little grainier than I wanted it to, but... You're kind of hurrying a bit. Yeah, well, we're doing it for a camera. Uh, and once again, I'm not a baker, I'm trying, I'm a gentleman who is trying his best. So, now that I got to that point, I've just decided to add in the rest of the sugar, because screw it. 
and we're just going to give the bowl different sides. Just pretend you're trying to impress British judges. Oh yes! Woo Your favorite. Alright. Now for this, and you can use a hand whisk. Three eggs. Three eggs. But I'm adding them in yeah. one at a time and making sure, once again, they are combined. Now this is going to fix any combining problems you've already had. This is going to smooth it out a bit as you do it, which is good, because you do want a smooth mixture. But make sure you're fully combined. It doesn't take long. It's worth it. You don't want any of the, you want to look down and see a moist mixture. You don't want to look down and see liquid on top. Get right in there. And once again, wouldn't you see the exterior of the bowl getting a lot of stuff on it, or uh, where the exterior, the part touching the glass is a different color. That just means that that's not mixed as well as the center. Wipe down the bowl. All right, and final egg. All right, so that's three eggs. Yep. again because I could see a little bit of yellow from the egg. And you just, there's no such thing as perfection in baking. You just go for it. All right. Now, this next ingredient, ultra important. Dutch processed cocoa powder. You can get this at any store. Hershey's makes Dutch processed cocoa powder, but that is a dark chocolate cocoa powder. Now this is a quarter of a cup. It's just a quarter of a cup, maybe it's a quarter of a cup. I don't remember how big of a cup I was supposed to use for the dark Dutch. Yeah, quarter of a cup Dutch processed cocoa powder. It's a very dark chocolate. Now the reason I'm doing that is if you use just normal cocoa powder, if you did, the brownies will actually turn a little bit red which isn't a bad thing. Uh, this gets them that really nice dark color and it adds a bit of that chocolate bite. Now this one I am going to incorporate in just like I do with the flour in a moment, which will be a little bit of whisking, but mainly we're going to fold it in. I just want to get that nice and deep in there, knock some on the floor. You know, the normal Good old floor pudding. Oh, floor pudding. You can have that later. That's that's for me. You're gonna kill my cat. Yeah, she she deserves it. She woke us up at what time this morning? Uh, four. Four? Yeah, that cat needs to go to bed. <laughs> We're gonna start keeping her awake all day just so she doesn't wake us up in the morning anymore. That's not my job. I'm not here during the day. Okay, fine. My new job is to keep the cat awake for umpteen hours a day. Thanks. That's right. Okay, now what I'm doing here is I'm using this to fold it in. Uh, you can really, really smell the chocolate when you do this. Okay. Now get the edges. Now that cocoa powder is going to stick to the side of the bowl. It wants to stick so bad. Okay. And there we go. This is the time. Get the very bottom, no matter what kind of whisk you're using, uh, that very bottom is going to get stuck and you can use your rubber spatula to get it off everywhere. And there we go. This is your base for what I consider to be one of the best brownies out there. Now, here we go. Patience time. Okay. This is for uh, fudgy brownies and I want to make sure I, I think it's one, is it half a cup or one cup? It is a half a cup plus two, tea, two tablespoons of flour. Okay. So that's half a cup and two tablespoons. Now I'm not gonna, it is going slow, which is why I can dump the whole thing in there. All right. You don't wanna use your electric, you want to fold this in. You're doing the same thing I just did with the cocoa powder, you're just folding it in, folding it over itself, scraping the bowl almost every time. Uh, at this point, I don't need the, that was 
was warm a moment ago. It's not warm anymore. So that's it. We're going to do this until you can't see flour anymore. So all I'm doing is scraping down the sides of the bowl and folding it in on itself. Now it takes a little bit to do it this way. You're gonna, you'll, you'll want to use the electric mixer because that gets it done in minutes. Uh, this, this helps. I don't know how, I don't know the science behind it. Alton Brown does. He won't answer my calls, I've tried. <laughs> uh, and if you haven't heard, Alton Brown's coming back. Uh, I think Good Eats starts back up on Food Network soon. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what we're gonna do because we are a, uh, what do you call that, cord cutting? You'll find it somehow. I'm exactly. sure it's on YouTube or something. All right. Now that we got it all off the sides, see now you're seeing this incorporated. Yeah. And this is the final step before we put it in the tray. Okay, I'm just getting all this flour incorporated in. There you go. And I think you got it. That's very close. I'm just getting the bottom now. Okay. This is that is brownie batter. Okay. Now, I'm big on not having dishes to do afterwards. So I always buy the 8x8 disposables because, you know, screw that. Before this all started, I set the oven to 350 degrees. You do want to grease your tray. No matter what you do, they're going to stick because that much sugar. And make sure you get the corners because if you're anything like John, you like the crispy edges. And finally, you make the biggest mess of them all. Oh no. Here we go. And this is how I make my messes because I always miss. Ah. Good so far. Look at Don't forget to leave a little on the spatula to lick. <laughs> Very important. Yeah, lick afterwards. Yep. Do not lick. <laughs> do not lick during. All right. And now, by the way, uh, on that flower step. That's when you can add in your additions. If you want to put nuts in there, if you want to put little chocolate chunks in there, right when you're finishing up the flour stage, oh. that's when you do it. For the last step? For the very last step before you put it into this tray. And of course, once it's in the tray. Okay, now this is going to go in the cover, in the oven, uncovered for chewy, I'm sorry, for fudgy. 35 minutes. Mm. Now, at that 30 minute mark is usually when I start checking. Uh, toothpick test does fine. Toothpick to the center. If it comes comes out clean, it's pretty damn close to done. Uh, you're looking at the corners. You're, you're just kind of looking. We're going to come back to that in a moment. So I'm setting my alarm for 35 minutes to know that I should be done by them, but at 30 minutes I'm going to check it. I got to clean out the bowl because we don't want to use that for the double boiler. I'm going to clean that out. We're going to come back and we're going to make cakey brownies next. All right, we're back for the next one. We have our fudgy brownies in the oven. What I was telling you before about buying that specific bag, the Giordelli, uh, it's a 10 ounce bag. Uh, a fudgy brownie takes six ounces of chocolate. A cakey brownie takes four. You can use one bag of chocolate and make two different style brownies. Now, I prefer fudgy brownies. I think a lot of people do, but that doesn't stop the fact that a cakey brownie is a nice treat. Um, I think that the one thing cakey brownies are really good at, ice cream. Putting ice cream on a cakey brownie, oh, just getting it into all those little uh, nooks and crevices. If you don't know the difference, a fudgy brownie is very dense. A fudgy brownie is going to have a lot of that chocolate flavor. Bang! Oh, man. It's going to hit you right in the tonsils. Uh, tonsils don't taste things, but it's going to hit you. Uh, that's how it works now because that's how brownies do. Cakey brownies are a little bit fluffier. They're they're a lot more porous, and you put cut those in half, put ice cream on them. I once saw a guy put butter on it. That was <laughs> it was me. I put butter, and it was amazing. Four ounces of the bittersweet chocolate. Here. We're gonna reduce the butter on this one. This butter is only half a stick. 
Uh, that is half a stick of butter in there. Stop asking questions. Uh, and we're going to have to give the water a moment to get it back to temperature. So what we're going to do in that, we're going to talk about another major part about cooking. I'm really bad at this. Cleaning as you go. <laughs> so Xander, show him the counter. Okay. This is a problem. <laughs> this is fine. It's very clean. Yeah, yeah, totally clean. Um, recommendation for all of you. If you have a dishwasher, which I do, make sure that the dishwasher is empty before you start because you're uh, obviously, you don't need this. I did this so I'm not measuring out items. If you guys don't know how to measure your items yet, uh, you're, you're on your own. Uh, I can barely cook as it is. I'm not going to teach you how to use a measuring cup. So before this all got going, I measured out all my ingredients. They're all sitting here. I have a giant pile of cocoa powder on the floor in front of me. There's stuff stuck to the counter. There's chocolate everywhere. The sink looks like I murdered somebody. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not good at cleaning as you go. So after this is done filming, I'm going to have to spend an hour cleaning up. But you guys, you guys know to clean as you go. One thing you need to know about doing a double recipe like this, because of that water thing, you want to make sure your equipment is clean. I cleaned off two pieces of equipment, spatula and glass bowl. Everything else I'm using is just sitting there from the last one because there's not a big, the changes in these brownies is less butter, more flour. Everything else is the same. So the only big change I'm making is the fact that I have to reuse the equipment, obviously, and I'm uh, get it, lowering the butter. That's going to give it that nice flaky, uh, the nice, the nice puffy uh, texture. Gotcha. Also, I didn't mention this on the last one. To the flour, I added a pinch of salt in both of these. And once again, adding salt to a sweet recipe like this, it enhances the flavor. Ask any chef. The reason that you add a little bit of salt to your baking, to your cookies, to your brownies, to your cakes, it brings out the sugar flavor. It's the same reason that you hear people putting salt on, um, what do you call that stuff? Watermelon. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it actually enhances the sweet flavor. It has to do with your taste receptor. Ask Kage, I bet you he knows why that works. Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing here, exact same thing again, I'm watching for condensation, and I'm getting this nice and liquidy. <laughs> Now, here's the thing about cakey browner. So remember before I was going a little bit slower? Now I'm not going to just dump everything in. But from the start, I'm going to use the uh, mixers. Why am I going to use the mixers? Because there's less here to melt the sugar in. I'm not going to be able to get a nice smooth consistency. So using the power of an electric hand mixer actually helps in this scenario. Uh, we're going to basically be using the hand mixer all the way through, up into including some of the flour. Okay, this is, now you see, I can see the steam coming up this side of the bowl, but it hasn't condensed yet, so I'm still good as I'm setting fire to my hand towel. That over there. Okay, getting close. I am the tallest cameraman. You are the right tall now. cameraman. Okay. Getting in close. Okay, as I'm mixing this, I'm literally looking for all the lumps, all the bubbles, all that to go away, and I'm very very close. Every time I stir this, I'm seeing a few of the solids still mixing in, but that right there is melted chocolate and slightly green butter. You gotta pop those bubbles. And a single chocolate nib still stuck to my damn spatula. Okay. Makes funny noises. Though. That is done. Now, once again, it's just steam. It's not too bad. I don't like touching steam. All right. Now, sugar is next. Once again, one and a half cups of sugar. We're gonna go right to the stand mixer on this one. Put it set to its lowest setting. Sugar right onto the stand mixer. Now, you're gonna get a bit of lumpy consistency here. It happens. There's not enough liquid here to melt all the sugar. Uh, you can see like this is perfect consistency. But as we add more and more sugar, it's gonna get worse and worse. Also, bear in mind, 
notice underneath here, I put a little uh, thing to stop it from touching my cold, cold countertop. That's not only the same for countertop, this is a glass bowl that was sitting on top of boiling water. Uh, you'll break the bowl. Oh, yeah. You want uh, something underneath your bowl when it comes out of there hot. Okay, so now you can see it getting a bit more granulated. That's because I'm not taking my time with it. But this one's hard to get granulated, and quite frankly, uh, because it comes out so soft and cakey, it's going to save it anyway. So, not a big problem. Back to cooking. All right, and now as you can see, I've gone full tilt. This is just a nice, goopy mess. Don't forget, clean your sides. Clean your sides. Oh. This is the one you really want to get the sides good on this first one, because that's your sugar. That's your that's the granulation that you really don't want in your final product. If you don't get this incorporated on this run through, it's not going to incorporate later, and you're going to have these weird, crunchy, sugary, amazing balls of just not okay. Look at that texture. Yes, I like that one. Oh, all right, and one more time around. Okay. Okay. I'm um, increasing. Uh, Stand mixes all go a little differently. I just went from a one to a three, so that out of ten, so that gives you an idea of how little I'm up in the power. And all I want is to get everything incorporated. What kind of mixer are you using? Uh, this is a is it Hamilton Beach? No, Food Network. Food Network. This is a Food Network mixer. I'm almost positive my mom bought me for the, oh. bought this for me when I moved out. All right, same thing as last time. Second ingredient is the eggs. I'm keeping it on three, and I'm putting them in one at a time. Okay. Fully incorporate. You, you don't want to see a really wet area and a really uh, crumbly area. The whole thing should be of equal consistency. Once you reach equal consistency, that means it's time for the next egg. Egg number two and number three, that's when I scrape down the bowl. You can see it building up on the sides. You can see the liquid not quite incorporating from the sides because the stand mixer can't get there. It tries. It wanted to visit its family. Stand mixer got went through a really wild divorce. Uh, it and chocolate don't get along anymore. Uh, but it's it's got chocolate fever. It's really into chocolate. So what about the kids? Oh, the kids. Oh, Katie. <laughs> Cakey. Cakey the kid. Diabetic. Can you believe it? No, I can't yeah. believe that at all. Totally fucking diabetic. Third egg. All right. Uh, now, now it's got that beautiful, smooth consistency once again. Now, gotcha. Now, once again, cake use, one, you, it's, they're a little bit more forgiving. You're, you're not going to feel as much of the texture because it's going to bake up. Uh, to the flour, you probably can't see it on the camera. There's two uh, boob mounds. Those them. two boob mounds are uh, a... I don't remember. Okay. Oh, it's it's a, tea, a table, teaspoon? Two teaspoons? I'll find out for you. It's either one or two tablespoons, teaspoons of baking powder. I think it's one. I think those are both half teaspoons. So, because this one is a little bit more forgiving, the only reason I'm not going to use the stand mixer right away so I don't get a giant cloud of fucking cocoa powder, there's our quarter cup of Dutch process cocoa powder. I'm going to just grab the spatula and incorporate it enough so that when I turn on the mixer, it doesn't just turn into the black cloud. Uh, I have breathed in a lot of cocoa over the years. My lungs are delicious. All right, back to the divorced mixer. Okay, keeping it at three. Okay. Uh, some of you have asked, sifting. Do you need to sift? I sift everything. Um, you don't need to do it. You don't, it's, it's a nice thing, it, it does help smooth things out. Every ingredient that's been put in, put in here has been run through a screen to get out chunks because to me, a smooth brownie is still very important. Uh, but do you need to do it? No, fucking do what you want. I don't, it's, I'm not eating your shit. 
<laughs> Unless I am, in which case, sift it. But yeah, sifting, and if you don't know what that is, sifting is literally running it through a screen. You can buy a sifter. There's no reason to buy a sifter. I own one of these. You can tell I use it a lot because it's discolored. Uh, this fine screen mesh is great for flour, sugar. Um, if you had like a shit ton of plant matter in butter, it does really good for getting that out for the first stub uh, before you put it through a, uh, an actual filter. I'm not saying what that could be, like maybe you're boiling roses, rose water. Um, and this one, same thing as last time. There's two ways to do it. You can add slow and just keep mixing it, which is not a bad way. You're actually going to get a pretty decent consistency. And you know what? Screw it. We're going to make these right. I was going to go fast, now I'm going to go late. So, this is going to make a big puff cloud, but uh -huh. we're just adding a little bit at a time. You'd be shocked. Taking a little bit of extra time. Oh, that was bad. Okay, I'm going to put it in about half of it and then scrape. Okay, now once again, this was. Uh, we had more flour into this one. The last one was half a cup and two tablespoons. This one is one and a half cups of flour, a teaspoon of baking powder. It is a teaspoon. Now I remember. It's a teaspoon of baking powder. I put in two half teaspoons and the same thing, a pinch of salt. So in that bowl, right here, I had all those ingredients already sifted together. Once again, slow is the way to do this. I'm speeding it up a little bit because, well, quite frankly, this batch, I want done. Sugar alchemy. Sugar alchemy. Oh, my God, I want sugar alchemy. Can I be a sugar alchemist? Maybe that'll be your next... Once again, uh, if you're noticing the flour flying out, it's because I'm a terrible cook. Maybe that'll be your next apron. <laughs> flour alchemy or sugar, sugar alchemist. Alchemy. Yes, this one is so much thicker batter. Oh, there's that cake batter. There you go. Look how thick this is. All right, so now, and I ran into this problem before. This gets so thick that we're going to incorporate using the spatula until the very end now. So you stand up over here. Who, me? No. Oh, that. Talking to the, ah. talking to the divorced. <laughs> You're weird. Okay. Don't give your tools... My tools got a divorce! Don't give them marriage status is... I was its marriage counselor. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, Mrs. Buttersnaps, no. You two are so good together. Do you ever get weird when you have to fill out those, like, statuses on forms? Oh, are you, uh, married? Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, don't know. No, you're single! You're uh, swinging single, baby. Yeah, I love that they don't have, like, a question mark? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, now now we got it. Okay, so uh, bring the camera in for a second. Okay. Okay, so notice how there's still flour, and mm -hmm. it's having trouble incorporating, yet the batter is like this. Whoa. Okay, this is a thick batter. It's so good. It is thick. It's with two C's, thick with two C's. I hate you. What? So what I'm going to do to finish it off is I'm going to slowly turn up the power on this mixer until it can incorporate. See how yeah, the flour is... The flour is disappearing because it's getting incorporated and getting flung from the bowl! Onto the wall with you, flour! Wow, that's pretty crazy. Onto the wall with you. All right. Now, to finish it off, we're going to... Are you building a wall of chocolate? Yes. Okay. This is my chocolate and mortar. All right, you let go. All right. And the worst part about cooking, getting the fucking chocolate off of the beaters. Uh, usually, I use my tongue for this, but Xander told me to stop being so goddamn fat. He was very adamant about it. I said whenever you make stuff to get fat, you have to do it on camera. <laughs> 
Is there a new rule for uh, for my desserts? Walking to the store? Yeah, that doesn't work so well, because Jewel's, like, right there. Yeah, not only is it right there, like, he came up with this rule. It's like, all right, if you want to buy a dessert from now on, you have to walk to Jewel to buy it. I'm like, you know what? No, that seems fair. So I walked to Jewel and bought four cakes. He's like, no, you get one dessert. All right, we're back. Ready for this one? Yeah. Cakey brownies. Now, there's a multitude of reasons it gets this thick. This is mine. This is normally not how it works. This. Ah! It's a cakey brownie. It's a cakey brownie. You can almost balance the whole freaking thing on one rubber spatula. And what all I'm doing now is just getting it out of the glass bowl. I'm gonna flatten this out in a second. I've already greased the pan. These are greased pans. A uh, little bit heavier on the grease than normal. It's not gonna mess with you. In fact, uh, I for one like a little bit of a uh, crust on the brownie. So I do like to add uh, a more oily spray. If you can't see it at the bottom, that is actually one part cooking spray and one part butter. Uh, it doesn't brown. It's not going to brown because it's underneath. It's not getting that direct heat. But it will give it a little bit, and I mean very, very little, of a, of a more chewy crust-like. Uh, and I like that, so I do that. You don't have to. Everyone has their preference of brownie. Uh, hello. Uh, my mom, when she would make a style like this, she moistened the tray, put flour in it, and shook it around until the whole tray was coated with a thin layer of flour because she was the exact opposite. She wanted the brownie the same consistency the whole way through, no extra uh, heating or cooking or anything like that, and it turned out really well. Now this one you do have to tamp down, and <laughs> that is how sticky this is. That's how clean the spatula was from mm. literally tapping it on the top of this. So. And that is going to be our cakey brownie. We're going to come back to you guys with two finished products. Uh, it's going to be a little bit because I, I, for one, since we're down to seven minutes on the other brownies, uh, I'm not going to put this in at the same time because don't forget, putting multiple things in your oven does mess with the temperature. Uh, I usually have no problem doing it, but if you can just wait seven minutes, why not? We're going to be right back with some finished products. We're back for a quick one just to show you how this turned out. Uh, pulled it and... Uh, <laughs> Cut it too early because I wanted a goddamn brownie. This is the fudgy brownies. Mm. You can see how, and that's not just because it came out of the oven. You can see how moist it looks inside. Yeah. That's when you pull it apart. Oh, this is point. Just, now, also, notice the top. That's what we were talking about, the butter, the uh, papery top. It's almost like a, a crunchy top. <laughs> crunchy top. Mm-hmm. Um... It falls apart, you should leave it. You should leave it to cool. I never do. I cut the, uh, the, the brownie tin every time, the tin foil tin that I use, and I just turn it out into a plate almost right away. I could have let this cool down. I could have made them nice and pretty, but I'm sorry. This whole pretty thing, last time I had a pretty meal, they gave me like a sprig of Brussels sprout, which is not a thing, and a sliver of steak, which is not a thing, and a mini cupcake. <laughs> so screw making it look good this tastes good and it's warm and i own ice cream so we'll be back in a moment with the cakey brownies which i'm not going to try yet all right go away and we're back for the last time so we showed you the fudgy brownies now i want to show you the inside of the cake brownies they literally just came out of the oven uh, but just to give you an idea to see come on over here xander okay They're a little bit thicker. They have a yeah. green toothpick for no reason. Don't ask questions. Uh, they're a little bit thicker. They're a lot softer. If we can get an interior shot, I wanted to show you guys before everybody devours them. And we are about to use the camera that we are using to record this to put outside for the <laughs> fireside cast. So hopefully we'll just get a still picture or something like that of the finished product of the cakey brownies. Once again, that is your... Fudgy brownies, nice, chewy, delicious inside. And by the way, if you're into really chewy brownies, if you like a brownie that is going to have that really chewy consistency, replace the sugar with brown sugar. Putting that molasses in there makes it a really chewy brownie. Ooh. I like my normal sugar, uh, but the brown sugar one is an outstanding treat. If you like chewy brownies, that's the way to go. These, so good with ice cream. And um, yeah, can't wait for my friends. 
Guys, this has been Cooking with Alkali. I hope you guys had a little bit of fun with us, and uh, please remember, I'm not a good cook. If you're <laughs> going to try to repeat what I've done, it's probably wrong. Thank you very much, and good night. Bye.